Let's see what it's like to wake up with Alarmo. Hear that? The alarm is going off. Well, Tennessee's season has been turned completely on its head following the loss to Arkansas. Some may wonder if the season's over, and some have maybe a little too much hope. But nonetheless, that loss to Arkansas has left a lot of questions on the table for Tennessee going into their big matchup against the big time rivals, the Florida Gators, who, let's be honest, own Tennessee as of recently. They beat us in the last most recent matchup. And well, if you look at all time, it's pretty lopsided there too. So there is a lot on the line for Tennessee, not just rivalry, not just, you know, trash talk, but because basically the season rides on this win. A lot of people, a lot of Tennessee fans had playoff aspirations for this year. And some are denying that that, some are denying that they had those aspirations. We all know that's the case. Come on now. But let's be real here. This is a huge game to determine whether or not Tennessee is really a bunch of frauds or if Tennessee just had a really, really bad day last week. So now it is time to decide that. So without further ado, let's preview this game after cueing that intro. Oi, fellow comrades, it is Squid Tart here, and welcome back to another Squid Tart Sports video. I can't believe we're already through six weeks of the college football season already. This is Tennessee's sixth game. Past this point, we're going to be halfway through the season, so it's crazy to think that we've already blasted through almost halfway through the college football season. Absolutely insane to th- absolutely insane to think that a month and a half from now, most of these teams' seasons are going to be completely over, and the team we're facing... That might be the case for them too. Who knows? A lot is riding on for Florida with this game too. So boy, this is a huge game for both teams. First of all, I want to go ahead and say thank you all for all the support that you've given to this channel, wherever you are. And if you happen to be in Florida, I I pray and think of you in this video and all the videos I make for this week, because there is a, you know, of course, a huge hurricane going through Florida right now. And a lot of people are stranded and, you know, Whatever, whatever the choice of may have been for the people residing down in Florida, I wish nothing but the best for them, and I hope they're safe at this time. So, all right, well, let's go ahead and roll through and talk about this game. The Vols and the Gators. As I mentioned before, this is a pretty lopsided matchup we got here. Tennessee is the underdog in this series, 32-21, to 21, which means Florida leads the series, obviously. Duh, thanks, Captain Obvious. But the point is, Florida owns Tennessee all time. And a lot of that is due to their period of dominance in the 90s and the 2000s. Of course, even when Tennessee was really good back in the 90s, they still had a lot of trouble against Florida. Peyton Manning never beat Florida. You know, it's just a lot, just a continuous amount of losses for Tennessee against Florida. And on top of that, once Tennessee started to revert to, you know, the garbage dump from the, you know, the 2010s in that era, they never beat Florida. I think Florida went on like a 13, 14 game winning streak before Tennessee finally beat them in 16. And then they went on a bunch of more years until Tennessee finally beat them again in 22. And then of course, last year, Florida won the last game 29 to 16. We went to Gainesville, a high and mighty of ourselves in the top 10. And then Florida came in and well, they beat us uh, in, we haven't won in Gainesville since 2003. And my, my expectation is, is who knows how long it'll be until we win. Because as we know, Tennessee's record on the road in the SEC is not a good one. I think we're Josh Heupel is six and eight, uh, against SEC opponents on the road. Just, uh, yikes. When you think about it, when you think about a team and a coach that's done really, really well in the four years that he's been at Tennessee, a record like that makes you double think that, but nonetheless, Tennessee had a really, really bad weekend against Arkansas. We lost to the Razorbacks 19 to 14, just an overly horrifically bad game uh, offensively. Uh, Nico was 17 of 29 for 158 yards. Most of those passes, kind of like how Joe Milton was last year, a lot of those completed passes came from behind the line of scrimmage, the bubble screens, and I've already talked about those and how much I dislike them. But so, 
you know, it's no secret Nico had his worst game last weekend. Everybody knows that to be the truth. He was, you know, he couldn't find open receivers. He was constantly getting flustered in the pocket. It was just a really, really, really bad day for Nico. Dylan Sampson was pretty good. He had 138 yards on the ground out of 22 carries. But you can only do so much when that's all you're doing is running up the middle. Everybody knows it. All Arkansas had to do is stack the box, and even that went away after a short period of time. He had a couple of pretty good runs. Two of them, two of them were uh, touchdown runs, which you know made the game close at the end of it. But still, Tennessee came up short. Deshaun Bishop, who was supposed to be the running back too in the dual running back system that Tennessee usually runs, he only had three carries for 19 yards. This is just like against Florida last season where we had, you know, three different running backs, including Dylan Sampson, but we only gave him the ball. I think we didn't even give him the ball one time. This feels like a scenario in that where we just, for whatever reason, don't take advantage of the dual running back system. When you don't know which running backs being given the ball, it would throw off the defense, which is what made the play calling so unbelievably insane from my perspective. I've talked about it plenty of times before. I've talked about it on the Vol Star podcast. We do a show on Mondays at 8 o'clock p.m. where we talk about all things Tennessee. And I went on like a good 15, 20 minute rant about the play calling. To dumb it down here, because we don't have a lot of time, obviously, on these previews, all I'm going to say is that the play calling was absolutely ludicrous. We dumbed it down to two different plays, and Arkansas was pretty much able to guess it almost every single time. And, it, you know, eventually it came to a point past the third quarter where Tennessee literally just waved the white flag every time on offense and just gave the ball right back to the defense. And the defense. While they had it, you know, not they didn't have their best day at all. Uh, you know, the, the defense had an off day, allowing 300 total passing yards. And like you look at that, and you're like, wow, the defense must suck. No, uh, the, the Tim Banks defense has always been a bend but don't break philosophy, and that showed in the Tennessee Arkansas game. We only allowed 19 points, but still they had 300 passing yards. So you know. It's it's kind of that thing. It's like in the Kentucky game where Devin Leary had 300 passing yards and Tennessee still beat him. It's a lot like that. So, you know, that, that that's what you can get from that. Anyway, it was just a really, really bad day overall for Tennessee. Nico didn't look good. The offensive play calling was horrid. We kept shooting ourselves in the foot with penalties, especially that roughing the kicker penalty or roughing the punter, which gave Arkansas the ball back at a critical time in the game and potentially basically won them the game because it continued that drive and eventually led them on to score. So potentially that really could have lost us the game. So, you know, all you, all, all that's left to take from that game is it was a really, really bad day overall. The coaches, uh, the, the head guy, Josh Heupel, the players, you know, they're all in agreement on that. And they've said, you know, next week's going to look different. And whether or not that's coach speak or if that's actually something Josh Heupel means we're going to find that out this week as we uh, play the Florida Gators. You'd have to go back all the way to 1992 to find a time where Tennessee even got close to blowing out Florida. There have been plenty of blowouts that Florida had on Tennessee, but even when Tennessee beat Florida in recent history, it's never been a blowout. Going back to the 2022 game, Tennessee, they had a big lead, but Florida climbed all the way back, got an onside kick, and had possession on the final play of the game down by five. A Hail Mary would have won them the game, but thankfully that didn't happen. Tennessee wound up winning that game. What I'm trying to say is, you know, this is one of those rivalries where, at least on Tennessee's side, no matter how good or bad the team is, it's all, you know, we always find a way to, you know, Florida always finds a way to keep it close with uh, Tennessee. When you look at Florida right now, they're three and two. They have wins over Sanford, Mississippi State, and the most recent one being UCF. And then they, of course, have the losses against Miami and Texas A&M, which you look at the A&M game, you're like, oh, wow, that's a bad loss. But now we know that A&M is a really good team, actually. So neither of those losses are bad, but they are both at home. So it'll be interesting to see if they can rebound from that. Florida's on a two-game winning streak, and in both of those games, they've been pretty good. Graham Mertz has been really, really efficient through the air. Hey, he went in the UCF game, 19 of 23 for 179 yards and a touchdown. So you look at stats like that, and you're like, wow, that's pretty good. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's pretty good. But then again, it is Mississippi State and UCF. It's not like, you know, they're facing an elite defense. Not to take anything away from Florida, those are two good wins at a really, really 
big time where Florida needed wins like that to keep their momentum going forward. So we'll see how that goes. But yeah, Gray Mertz had a good game. And DJ Lagway, Florida's been kind of doing this system, the, the quarterback hokey pokey, where they've been switching two quarterbacks in and out. That's what they've been doing with Gray Mertz and DJ Lagway. Lagway didn't get much playing time in this game, but he had four. He was, he was four out of four for 50 yards. So, you know, as efficient as you'd want with a quarterback, he only throws four times. Uh, Montrell Johnson, the star running back for Florida, only had 37 yards out of 10 carries. So Florida hasn't really utilized the run game, whether or not you want to put that on the offensive line or just, you know, that's what, not what they do. I'm not, so, I'm not so sure about that. Florida's a team that likes to take advantage of the run when they can, and they just didn't really do much of that against Mississippi State and UCF. In terms of receivers to watch for in this game, Shamir Dyke and Elijah Badger are two guys that I think are going to make a huge impact for Florida in this matchup. They're going to sort of be the ace factors for Graham Mertz or DJ Lagway or whoever starts. And what I'm guessing is going to be Mertz, but Lagway could get some potential playing time. Whatever the result may be, both of those guys I think are going to be big trouble for this defense. And speaking of which, the defense for Florida... Uh, had a really good day against UCF. Five, uh, they they got five sacks and seven tackles for loss. So pretty good day for the Florida defense. They also, and this is important for the sake of Tennessee, held UCF to less than 300 yards total. Now, you could compare UCF to Arkansas. Arkansas had more than 300 yards on Tennessee's defense, and Florida held UCF to less than 300 yards total. You know, it's not like I'm trying to make a A B comparison and say that Florida's defense is better than Tennessee. That's not exact that's not at all what I'm saying. It's just important to take note of that it looks like Florida's defense might have just taken a bit of a step forward from what it was last year. And, you know, Florida fans are gonna stab me for this comparison, but it's it, it is something to take note of. What I saw in the UCF game was pretty similar to what I saw with the Todd Grantham defense. And a lot of people are going to say, oh, well, Todd Grantham defense was terrible. Yes, in moments it was absolutely horrible. But what he, you know, the philosophy that he had was sort of bringing, you know, five, six linemen up front and then, you know, a bunch of guys in the backfield, especially on third down, just bringing as much pressure as you can on the quarterback. And I think that'll be a significant key going into this game because like I said about the Arkansas game against Tennessee, Nico was really, really flustered in that game throughout the entire time. Even when they were rushing only three, three, uh, you know, three defensive linemen, he was still getting really flustered in the game. And a lot of that is in fault to the offensive line. The offensive line for Tennessee had a really, really bad day. Holding calls, um, but, but that's the that's the least of it. They just weren't able to cover any of these def defensive linemen. So if Florida is rushing, you know, five, six guys, obviously they're, we're going to need a kind of big change in terms of the offense and how they function. Otherwise, Nico's going to get killed out there on the field. So, you know, some, some things are obviously going to have to change with how we perform our offense. And especially if they're bringing up six, like, defensive linemen up, uh, up right on the line of scrimmage, then it's going to make it really hard to run the ball unless you come with a uh, you know an offensive philosophy change. And I think that's something that these coaches know that they're going to have to do in a matchup like this one. Obviously, Gators, the Gators, the coaches, they've seen the film from Oklahoma and Arkansas's defense, and they're probably going to run with a similar formation in this matchup. So my expectation is, is that we're going to have to work around that. We're going to have to file in some trick plays. We're going to have to do you know, do some different stuff than what we've done. Because I think leaving it to the defense in a matchup like this is just obviously not going to work because Florida is in a, you know, they're in a situation where they've been pushed to a corner. They're going to pull out their bag of tricks. They're not just going to go down. They're not going to get complacent or conservative. They're going to bring out everything that they can to win a game like this. So no, getting conservative is not an option. Tennessee needs to come out and they need to come out aggressive. They need to get a big lead pretty quick. Then they just need to completely just start pounding Florida. That's the only way that I can think that Tennessee wins this game in an efficient format. Florida's going to be trying all game to get pressure on Nico. We know that to be the case. They're going to have to find a way to work around that. And that's kind of, of course, the biggest concern. So, you know, there's two different endings to this. You know, you, you've played video games before where, you know, there's the good ending and there's the bad ending. Let me explain to you how this goes. The bad ending, Tennessee comes out with the same offensive formation from the last two weeks. They come out, you know, conservative on offense, give the ball back to Florida multiple times. While the game could get out of hand early, I don't think that would happen. 
But I think as the game goes on, Florida just starts pulling out their bag of tricks, and Tennessee has nothing to work with since, you know, what they got on offense is not very good from the looks of it. So then Florida beats Tennessee, and by that point, the season has become officially derailed. And, uh, oh boy, uh, the channel here is going to be not very pleasant. Uh, if that's the case. But there is also the good ending. And this is what the coaches have been talking about. And again, I hope this isn't just coach speak and they're coming out with the same game plan as next week. But the good ending, of course, is that we have a much more thorough offense. Uh, You know, we're able to do a whole lot more with Nico. We're going to let him run the ball. We're going to let him sling it. We're going to give them the keys to the ship. Even, even, Even if he does make mistakes, we are in a situation where we have a defense that can make up for it. It, it makes all the sense in the world to let Nico go out there and control the ship. If he has a bad day, he has a bad day. We have plays, we have ways to work around that. But you know, there's got to be there's got to be something more than just bubble screen, bubble screen, bubble screen. All right, it's third and twenty-two. Right up the middle, Dylan Sampson. There's got to be something, something more than that. So hopefully we come out with a whole lot more than that. And something that I think will play a big part in this game is the home crowd. Obviously, it's a huge deal to have this game at home in Neyland Stadium. In fact, all, we, don't go in, we don't go on the road until November, so we get to relax with that for a while. But yeah, the home crowd, I think, is going to make a huge impact on how Florida does their offense. And I think Tennessee is going to be a lot more calm on their offense, and I think that's going to play a huge part for the Vols in this game. So... My score prediction, I'm going to give that in just a minute, but my prediction for this game, as well, I do think it's a pretty close game, but what Tennessee is a 15 and a half point favorite right now, you know, we'll have to see how that goes. But my prediction is, is that Tennessee sort of gets into the swing of things uh, later on in the game. Maybe at halftime, they have a seven or 10, you know, 10 to something lead, something like that. But then as the game goes on, you know, Tennessee sort of pulls away. Florida does their part in trying to keep up, but they're they're just going to be playing catch up the entire time. I think Tennessee takes care of business and wins this game, thirty-one to twenty. Of course, there's still a lot of questions in this game whether or not you know Tennessee will have all of their receivers. I know Brew McCoy, Squirrel White, and Dante Thornton are all questionable for this game. Who knows whether or not they'll be playing. And if that's the case, some of the freshman guys are going to have to stand up. Mike Matthews, for example, he's going to have to come in and look really, really good. We'll, we'll, we'll see how it plays out. Um, you know, I'm not going to base my predictions based off of injuries unless it's a quarterback, which, you know, that isn't the case for either team. So we'll see how it goes. You guys give me your score prediction down in the comments below. And as always, thank you to everyone for watching. And thank you especially to my patrons. If you're subbed to the Patreon, thank you so much for being so. Uh, I appreciate all the support that you've given to this channel. And uh, of course, if you're waiting on the hate video, of course, I will bring that out tomorrow. And I've got a lot to say on that regard for Florida. So I'll see you guys in the next video. And as always, power to Tardaria, but more importantly, for the sake of this channel, go Vols!